This is the new BMW X6 and it's basically an X5, only with a slightly sportier, less practical body. Though of course you have to pay extra for it because it's got six in the name rather than five and in BMW world, six is more expensive than five. And in this video, I'm gonna give it a jolly good review and tell you if it's any good. The BMW X6 starts from about 59 and a half thousand pounds which means it's about two grand more than the equivalent x5 though check this out look you can save an average of five and a half grand off one through car wow now if you'd like to get yourself the car wow app you can just click on the pop out banner up there and download it it's completely free now if you're in the market for an x6 you might also be considering the likes of a porsche kn coupe or a mercedes gla coupe you can check those out on car wow as well all right, and let's talk about the X6's design. So from the front, it's pretty similar to the X5. The grille is a little bit more pointy, but it's not hugely distinctive in the way that the one, the X7 and the 7 Series is really in your face. I do like the lights. The light design's lovely, and it's got that half hexagonal effect that you have on BMWs. Half hexagonal? Shouldn't that be like a triagonal? In terms of the front bumper, it's different depending on which model you have. If you had the M Sport, it's a bit more sporty than the entry level Sport. Speaking of which, as you go down the side, the Sport has smaller wheels to begin with. So they start from 19s, but you can get them up to 22 inches in diameter. So the M Sport has body colored wheel arches. The Sport version has them in black. Also, the InSport has black surrounds for the window, whereas they're silver on the Sport version. You get side skirts as well to make it look sporty. But the key thing about this car, obviously, is this sloping roof line. The way it just, ooh, just curves away to the back and it kind of kicks up at the end. And you have a little spoiler, look at that! Back design is very, very distinct. It does look very, very different than the X5. You have different colored bumpers at the back, depending on which version. Because this is the M50D, you have this extra bit of gray trim to make it look even sportier. Oh, and check this out. Look, we have huge exhaust surrounds, but within there, there are some real pipes. But I'll show you something that's totally fake. The stick of truth, it's just exposing such horrid ventery. Listen, if you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single video. Here on the inside, the X6 is classic BMW, which means quality is top notch. Everything you touch feels really robust and sturdy. The materials are nice. You get this leatherette on the dash, which adds a touch of class. Also, the layout is super simple to use. So you've got all your driving stuff there, your climate control there, your infotainment systems there, and an electrically powered steering column. It helps make the car feel worth that 60 grand price tag. Also, the seating position is multi-adjustable and very, very comfy. It appears there's absolutely nothing for me to complain about. Oh, wait a minute, there is one thing. The material the sun visor is made out of is so rough, it's like sandpaper. In fact, I've just removed a couple of layers of skin. In the back of the X6, it's fine. Knee room's pretty good. Headroom is bearable. Look, I've got enough space. People over six foot may find it a little bit snug. Now, if you need to carry three in the back at once, it's not ideal because the center seat is a little bit higher up. Also, once you've got three in the back, the people on the outer seats get pushed to the outside and this curved sloping roof line does then impinge on their head space. Another thing that's a bit disappointing is you can't slide or recline the seat backs like you can in an Audi Q8. So the Audi is actually better in the rear seats in this car. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, yeah, you click it on that pop-out banner, you can go watch it. The engine choices on the X6 are pretty simple. So there's the 40i, which has a three litre straight six turbo petrol with 340 horsepower. Then there's the M50i, which has a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower. Then there's the 30d, which has a three litre straight six diesel engine with 265 horsepower or this engine, which is the M50D, which has a three litre straight six diesel engine, but with four turbochargers, and therefore it produces 400 horsepower. And it also has this engine cover, which has fake carbon fibre on it. Lovely. Let's talk about equipment because the X6 is very, very well equipped as standard. So the range starts off with the sport model. Then you get this huge infotainment screen, which has built in navigation and also a Wi-Fi hotspot. There's also a digital driver's display as well. You get dual zone climate control, parking sensors. There's also emergency braking with pedestrian detection, standard cruise control and electrically operated leather seats. Next is the M Sport model, which gets upgraded sports brakes and various 
M bits of trim on the inside, including an M Sport steering wheel. Finally, there's the M50i and M50d, which have an upgraded exhaust for a fruitier sound. <laughs> Obviously, it sounds better with the petrol engine rather than this diesel, but it also gets a rear limited slip differential for better corner exiting traction and for, of course, doing what BMWs do best. Skids! 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 Skids in the BMW! Yes, 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 we're skidding in the BMW! Totty bye! Being a BMW, there are obviously lots of different options you can spend some extra cash on, and they come in the form of packages. I want to look out for is a technology pack because it includes this wonderful surround view camera where you can look all the way around the car and even do this lovely 3D effect which is kind of like, look, look at this, it's, it's a bit like a computer game. Yeah, lovely. It also includes a heads-up display which is really, really useful. Now, what you could do is go into CarWow and see how much you can save on the car because that could affect the amount you can spend on options and you can use our configurator to just get and build the car of your dreams. Now, rather than you having to go through all of this kind of stuff, I've actually configured what I think is the best engine and trim combination of BMW X6. And if you click on the pop-out banner just up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can see my ideal choice and the savings that are available for that particular car. I'll try to get the best deals for you. The entertainment system on this car is really good. The screen is very clear, nice and sharp graphics. You can control it by touch screen. There's shortcut buttons down the side down here as well we can control it using the swivel wheel system you can control it using gesture controls there we go that was the volume you can control it using your voice hey bmw go away if you won't speak to me anymore then i won't answer you either oh it's a bit short-tempered isn't she anyway yeah so you can control lots of features like that and it does understand normal speech to a fashion. As for the inbuilt satellite navigation system, it's very easy to input a destination and to put in a waypoint as well and get to where you need to go very, very quickly. Then there's the digital driver's display, which I think is less successful. Part of the reason is it's just all a bit dark and I don't know the way the rev counter goes backwards. The amount of information it can show there, it just isn't as varied as you can display on an Audi or Mercedes system. It's a bit of a shame. Otherwise, it's all pretty good. Speaking of Audis and Mercedes, they get Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. This car doesn't have Android Auto. It does have wireless charging and you do have a USB input there, a 12 volt socket there for charging things the old fashioned way. And there's another USB socket in here. Though as standard, there's no USB sockets in the back. All you get is a 12 volt charging port down there. What? Really? However, you do get Bluetooth and you get a Wi-Fi system as well, so you can use your car as a mobile hotspot for everyone's devices. There are loads of different driving aids you can get with this car, including a fully adaptive cruise control system, which will do things like brake to keep you a safe distance from a car in front and actually shunt you along in stop start traffic and auto steer you to keep you in lane. Speaking of which, you can also get reversing assistant, which remembers your steering inputs for the last 50 meters and can play them in reverse. So if you need to back out of a tricky situation or reverse around your suitcase without having to make the effort of actually steering the steering wheel like I'm doing now, the car will play the steering in reverse. What you have to do is control the speed and that's it. See, done, there's a suitcase, all fine and dandy. The X6 has an electric tailgate, yay, which is handy if you're lazy. In terms of the boot itself, there's a bit of a load lip to lift stuff over, but you can't just slide things on like that and you've got this scuff plate so you don't scuff your paintwork. It's got a square shape, which is pretty useful. And underneath here, there is some extra storage if you need it. There's tie down points, there's your 12 volt socket, there's even a little hook there. Look, a little hook! In terms of the capacity, it's 580 litres. By comparison, a Mercedes GLA Coupe has 650 litres. Still, it's a reasonable size and you can fit this much in the boot. That's probably enough for most people. You get three way split folding rear seats as standard, so you can do through loading. Also, you have releases for the rear seats here in the back as well as on the seat back so you can open it from the boot which is handy if your angry cameraman has locked you in because you've been doing their head in let me just do that one as well then i should be able to slither out like this because look as you can see there's no big ridge so it's quite easy to do i want to show you this while i'm at it as well look the rear windows may be small but they do go all the way down 
There's plenty of useful storage areas in this car. For instance, look, when you fold down the armrest, you can use this area here for very thin objects. Then you have some cup holders there. Also, there's some posh airplane style pockets on the seat backs and the rear door bins are rather large. They'll also be in the front as well. Look, see, even bigger. There's more storage down here for your wallet or your phone. The center console is okay in size. You have a couple of cup holders here and look, you can get them heated or cooled. Awesome, if you wanna keep your drink cold or your coffee warm. And then there is a glove box, which is of modest size. Overall though, in car storage is very good. Fitting a child seat here in the back of the BMW X6 is relatively easy. The Isofix anchor points are nice and easy to get to and the flip-up covers means that you don't actually lose the cover because they're always attached. Also, there's plenty of space back here, so you can even fit one of those bulky rear-facing seats without having to slide the chairs forward. The sloping roof line does mean it's a little bit harder to get the seat actually inside the car in the first place than it is with a more boxy-shaped X5. In fact, if you're thinking about buying this car, you should definitely consider the X5 as well as an alternative. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car to make sure you're making the right choice. This is the third generation of the BMW X6, and it may look quite a bit like the previous X6, but its chassis is all new. So it's longer, it's wider, it's lower, and the distance between the back and front wheels is bigger by about that much, about five centimeters, which means you get more interior space. All X6s get an eight-speed automatic gearbox as standard, and they have four-wheel drive, though it can run in rear-wheel drive only mode when you're cruising on the motorway to help save fuel. The X6 gets air suspension as standard, and that allows you to alter the ride height of the car, depending on if you're going off-road or you're driving on-road, and you can alter the stiffness between comfort mode or sports mode. This M50D and the M50i get M adaptive sports suspension as standard, which replaces the air springs for normal traditional steel springs, and as a result, it's stiffer for a more involving drive. Also, when you have the M adaptive sport suspension fitted, you get active anti-roll control, which stops the car leaning so much as you go through a corner. You can also get the car with something called integral active steering, which basically means that if you just turn the wheel a bit, then it does dart into a corner in a nice, lively fashion. Though it also knows when you're going at speed on the motorway, so it never feels too jittery. You can get the car with rear wheel steering, so when you're driving at lower speeds, the back wheel's turning the opposite direction to the front wheels, a bit like on a forklift truck, to aid low speed manoeuvrability. Then when you're going quicker, they turn in the same direction as the fronts for improved high speed stability. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. After when you go into the boot, you fold the parcel shelf back like that, and then you forget that you've done that, and when you shut the boot and you get into the driver's seat and you look in the rear view mirror, you can't see anything out the back because that's in the way. It really annoys me that people build SUVs with doors that don't extend all the way over the sills, especially when you've got sills that are sticking out like this because it's supposed to look sporty, because you just rub your jeans on them and look, my jeans are filthy already. You need a bit of extra cushioning for your lower back. Well, you can get lumbar support if I'm using it now. Unfortunately, it's an option on every single version of this car, which is a bit bizarre when you think that it starts from just under £60,000. Should be standard, really. If you spend extra on the upgraded Bang & Olufsen stereo, then you have a beautiful silver speaker here on the centre of the dash. If you don't, you end up with this horrible covering. It's just the nastiest piece of plastic I've encountered in any BMW. In fact, it feels like it's been made out of recycled Dacia Sanderos. Part of the price of the technology pack, which generally is quite awesome, includes this key. I mean, it's, yeah, it's got a screen on it, and you can swipe between different functions. But quite frankly, it's just like a mobile phone that I had in the noughties. It's just so laggy slow, and quite frankly, pointless and very, very bulky and heavy to carry in your pocket. Just feels like you've got a hernia when you've got it in there like that. Yeah, better go see the doctor, get that fixed. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. One of the options you can get for this car is something called Crafted Clarity, which sounds really wanky, but it's actually quite cool. So you can get like glass elements for the, the volume control there, for the starter button, for the iDrive controller, and my favorite bit, for the gear selector. I used to hate it when it first came out, but now I think it's really, really nice. Unless the engine needs cooling, the grille actually remains shut because that helps improve aerodynamics. Also, if you like a bit of Andy Bling, you can get this car with a grille that has 
ambient light is fitted to it, so it illuminates when you open and close the car. As with the smartphone, you can get over-the-air updates for the car's infotainment system, and the good news is BMW is about to introduce Android Auto, and you'll be able to use those over-the-air updates to upgrade your infotainment system so you can use your Android phone with the car finally! Yay! If you get the Sky Lounge panoramic glass roof, it has these special little elements in them, and then it can actually shine the same colour as the interior ambient lighting colour you've chosen for inside the car across this glass roof, which is kind of weird, but also very cool. Though it doesn't come for free, obviously. It's a two and a half thousand pound option. If you want to go a little bit off piste with the interior and exterior colour schemes, then you can do thanks to BMW Individual, which allows you to pretty much have the car however you want it. Finally, let's see what this X6 is like to drive. So when you're in town going at low speeds, that raised driving position does give you a good view out over other traffic, but you don't feel like you're sitting up quite as high as in something like a Range Rover Sport. The control, such as the steering, is light enough. The brakes are sharp, but not grabby. The gearbox is smooth when maneuvering. What's not good, though, is the view at the back window. It's rubbish. It's like looking through a letterbox. And when you're trying to reverse and park and looking over your shoulder, the thick rear pillars really, really get in the way. You are going to need the surround view cameras to help you out with parking. Then there's a the turning circle. It is quite large. So if you need to do a U-turn, it can be a bit of a pain. You end up having to do a three-point turn. But if you have that optional rear steering, it really does help. And then it's actually quite manoeuvrable, which is handy if you have to park in a really awkward and tight underground car park. When you get onto the motorway, this car really does feel at home. It's super planted, very stable when you're going quickly. The air suspension just soaks up the bumps beautifully. The M adaptive suspension fitted to this car is pretty good as well, though you do feel the bumps a bit more. I would get the car with air suspension. I just think it's superior overall. Now I'll tell you what's superior is the performance of this three litre diesel engine, thanks to its four turbocharger. So I'm doing 50 miles an hour now, just cruising. I see the 70 sign, here we go. Gearbox kicks down really well and then it just takes off. Now that doesn't tell the whole story because I backed off at 70 there. If I want to keep going from 70, which you won't do in England because that's completely illegal, it will just continue pulling like a train if you're on the autobahn. So here we go. This is 70 now. Watch this. I want to close track people. Look at it. Look at it just climbing. Speedo's just climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. That is really impressive. What's not so impressive is that when you go fast, you do notice a bit more wind noise. And because you've got these huge chunky tires, you do notice some road noise as well. It's definitely not quite as quiet to travel in as an Audi Q8. Finally, let's see what this car's like on a twisty road because after all, BMWs are supposed to be fun, regardless of whether they're SUVs or sports cars. So we're gonna put it into sports mode. That'll add some weight to the steering, sharpen the throttle, and stiffer the suspension, and here we go. I'm even going to change gears myself using the paddles. Whip, oh, up, oh, ooh. Yep, it's still an SUV. <laughs> if you go too quickly, it starts to run wide. However, oh, do you hear that? Bit of tyre squeal. It can send quite a lot of power to the rear wheel, so it feels a bit more sporty than something like an Audi Q8. However, well, I don't think it's still quite as fun to drive as a Porsche Cayenne Coupe. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Still, for a tall SUV, it goes around corners pretty darn well, if that's what you're after. Ah, feeling sick. Oh, right, that's it off. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW X6? Should you? Avoid it. Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the X6. It is a very nice car. It's just that it's a little bit more compromised in terms of practicality compared to the other coupe SUVs. And frankly, I don't think it's the best looking either. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.